Hi everyone, this is Delbert speaking and today's class is about the power flow and losses and trust me, it will be useful for the, the definition of the contract between uh, utilities. So the objective of this class is to present a typical method used for computing the power flow solution and consequently the losses in distribution systems. Um, well, we have different methods that could be used and I choose one method that in my opinion is more appropriated for the system that we will work uh, in October. And to explain why do we need uh, the, the, uh, why we need the, the, the power flow and losses uh, in our uh, study case, which is to define the best contract, uh, consider, consider that we have the transmission system, the distribution system, the border, and the power flow remember we talk about the power flow in the frontier of the distribution system and based on this power flow we will define the best contract so imagine that we have loads in the distribution system and the sum of this load could be the power flow because the power flow through uh, the, the, the border of the system will be used to feed the loads of the distribution system. But apart from the, the, the loads, the distribution system, we also have the losses. So the losses in distribution systems can represent more than 10% of, of the sum of the loads. So it's important to incorporate the losses in this process to obtain the power flow. And because of this, we need the losses. And how can we calculate the losses by using the power flow uh, solution? The power flow solution consists in solving uh, or in computing the voltage in each node of the system. If we have the voltage in each node of the system, we have uh, any other variable. We have uh, current uh, through the lines, we have active and reactive power through the lines, we have losses, etc. And we can use the power flow solution for planning. In this case, we are using to define the, 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 the best contract or for operation. As an example, we have uh, to define the, 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 the voltage, the voltage profile in, in the network. This is a, an application for the, the power flow solution. And we have many other uh, applications. So in this case we will apply the method called backward forward sweep method and this method consists to calculate uh, of calculating the current from the last node to the substation node and then in the forward sweep we compute the voltage in each node of the system. And the convergence will be given by the comparison between the power flow, the, the, the power injected, computed in each node of the system and the, 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 the actual power in each node of the system. So we have, as I told you, the backward sweep step and the forward sweep step. The process is performed iteratively 
which means that we need to compute in steps respecting the first and the second uh, Kirchhoff law. The convergence con condition uh, can be associated to the powerful. For some case, uh, you can use, for example, the losses to, to obtain the, the, the result. But in this specific case, we will use the power flow injected in each bus of the system. So the process will be repeated until the S, which is the power injected in each bus, would be equal or approximately, approximately the value of the power in each bus of the system. And how uh, can we compute the, the S, the power injected in each bus, by multiplying the voltage uh, computed for each bus and the conjugated current uh, in each bus of the system. So, Let's, using, uh, let's use an example to compute the power flow solution. Uh, this is a very uh, simple example. We, we, we could have a more elaborated example, for example, considering the more nodes the system, uh, we can consider generation in the system and so on. For simplicity, I choose a four, bus, a four bus example with three lines with the impedance of each line. And the first step consists to restart the counter because this is a, an iterative process, then we need a counter. Uh, and we initiate the voltage in each bus of the system. Usually we consider one uh, per unit, but we could consider any other uh, value. It's common to use the same value of the substation. So if the value of the substation is one uh, PU, we need to use one PU for all buses of the system. Then we increment the counter and with the voltage in the last step, we can compute the current in each bus of the system. And how can we do that? We know that the, the, the current, the, the power in each in each node should be calculated by this expression vi multiplied by the current so if you are interested in the current we need to do si divided by vi conjugated okay So we need to do this for all buses, for all buses of the system. Then we have the voltage and we have the current. With the current in each bus, we can compute the current in each line, each line of the system, respecting the, the first Kirchhoff law. So to do that, we have the, the current from the bus 3 to the bus 4 is the current injected at the bus 4. The current from bus 2 to, to the bus 3 is the current, uh, is the current injected at the bus 3 and the current from 3 to 4. And finally, the current 
through the line 1, 2 is the current injected at the bus 2 and the current from the bus 2 to the bus 3. So now we have the current and we can compute the voltage for this iteration. Remember that we start with the voltage in the last iteration, but now we can compute the voltage in this iteration. And how can we do that? We start by the uh, substation. We have the voltage in the substation. The voltage uh, at the substation is specified. So we have the voltage at the substation. Then we have the current. So we can compute the drop in this line, the voltage drop in this line, and obtain as a result the voltage at the bus 2. With the voltage at the bus 2, we compute the drop voltage in this line and compute the voltage at the bus 3. So the voltage at the bus 3 will be the voltage at the bus 2 minus the drop voltage in this line. So this is obtained by multiplying the impedance by the current. And finally, with the voltage at the bus 3, we obtain the voltage at the bus 4. If we had more lines here and here, so we apply the same, the same idea. Okay, it can be generalized by other systems. Okay, if we have a generator, for example, here, and then this injection maybe can be in this uh, direction, not this direction. So the method can be easily uh, adapted for other uh, systems and applications. So now we have the voltage and the current in each node of the system for the iteration K. Then we multiply the voltage by the conjugated of the current and obtain the S, which is the power computed for each node of the system. So we have the power for the nodes 2, 3 and 4. And now we can evaluate the difference. To do that, we, we separate the, the, the power uh, for the real part, for the active power, and imaginary part for the uh, reactive power. And then we compare the active and reactive part. If for all nodes of the system, for all nodes of the system, we have the value of uh, the, the, the difference between the computed and the actual value lesser than the, the a tolerance previously established, then we achieve the convergence. If it doesn't happen for one node or two nodes or any node, we need to go back to the step two and start the process again. In the step two, the step two, we have the voltage computed by the last step. We have the power in each node, and then we can compute the current again in each node, and then compute the, the, the current in each line and finally, the power, and we compare the power uh, computed and the actual power. And we test the convergence again until we reach the, the convergence. Okay? So this is basically uh, the method. And now, after the computation of the power flow solution, which means the computation of the voltage in each node of the system. Uh, we have the, 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 the current, we have the current in each line, the 
current in each line. And then we, we, we have the absolute value, the absolute value of the current. We square it and multiply it by the respective resistance in each line. So for this specific case, we have the resistance uh, in the line 1, 2, multiply the square uh, absolute value of the current from the node 1 to 2, and the same for the node 2 to 3, and the same for the line 3, 4. So with this, uh, uh, expression we have the losses and then we wink we increment the value of the losses with the value of the loads and finally we have the power flow through uh, the border of the distribution and transmission system so the reference uh, used uh, for this class is uh, this reference so you can find it um, typing I three, uh, a three phase power flow method for real time distribution system analysis it is uh, it was published on IEEE transactions on power system so you will have more details about this method uh, and this method will be used in our activity in October. The next class, I will present the same method with uh, numbers, which is, in my opinion, uh, an easiest way to understand uh, the, the, the method. So, see you in the next class. Bye.